Greetings from the University of West Florida, Pensacola, Florida, the United States. I've been asked to talk to you a little bit about a concept uh, that I introduced way back in 1989 in a book called The Great Good Place. And the concept is the third place. And it's an extremely simple idea in the sense that well, it came about because of the Industrial Revolution, which had the effect of widely separating a person's home from the place he or she worked. And the third place, then, is, well, the first place would be the home, the second place would be the workplace. And what is the third place? It's where we gather apart from home and work in a spirit of camaraderie and joviality, and we enjoy one another's company. And this has always been a very important part of uh, life, in not only in this culture, but in every culture I look at. The problem occurred, it had its inception in the United States in 1926, when the Supreme Court decreed that we must build according to the principle of single-use zoning. And that meant that there could be nothing but homes in residential areas, nothing but private homes. And that had the effect of essentially destroying community. And when you destroy community, you left the nuclear family uh, very vulnerable. And you put a, 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 a tremendous burden on family life, and on marriage. So we came up with the concept of togetherness marriage, which really didn't work out very well because in the United States today, half of the marriages end in divorce. Well, so the third place then had, the first of all, the function of unifying the community. The third place is any place we might gather on a regular basis. Typically, there are small businesses which can be visited frequently at very little cost. Uh, now, in the, there are a few cultures where that idea has been strongly favored. And I'm thinking of Italy and I'm thinking of France, the, um, the, uh, the, the cultures which, <clears throat> well, in, in, in French life until modern times, there was a, cafe, for example, on virtually every block in the village. And these and, and people went there to make phone calls. They went there to meet their friends. And um, so it, it, was, it was the ideal. We approximated it in the United States. But again, as I say, in 1926, the Supreme Court decreed that we would build according to single-use zoning. Now, in the United States, everything... Since World, everything built since World War II has been basically built wrong. You've heard of perhaps of American exceptionalism. It does not extend to our cities. Our cities are basically a disaster with a few exceptions, but basically it's all wrong. Now, <clears throat> when, when we lost our third places, we put increasing emphasis on the home. The home, uh, see, for most of our history, people would get out of the house, get away from the home for their entertainment. That has all changed now. Whereas in, <clears throat> in Europe, homes are still built uh, with a fairly modest amount of square footage. In the United States, new homes are built at least twice as large as the average European home. And we have all the entertainment there. Now, <clears throat> as a consequence of this, our public life is a shambles. We really don't have much of a public life anymore. So I've been arguing for the third place. It came to me very strongly when the first time I moved into one of our American subdivisions. A lot of these subdivisions don't even have sidewalks because they're... You're not into, supposed to walk in them. You, in, in the United States today, everything is connected by the automobile. And one of the reasons our cities are so bad is because 
the traffic engineers have had to take over and they don't know much about how to handle automobiles. Our friend from Norway came over not long ago and, and stayed with us for a few days and and after the first day she said, my God, you people have to get into the car for everything, which is quite true. Anyway, back to the third place. The third place is, uh, is, is where we hang out, if we have one. They are inexpensive. Conversation is the main activity. And a third place is essentially defined by its regulars, or in cafe parlance, they're called habitués. The people that meet there virtually every day. One of the things this does <clears throat> is it brings people together in a wonderful mix. Now you hear some times these days about virtual third places and I want to warn you about that concept. Virtual, the term means that something is the same as something else in both essence and effect. The idea that you can replace the camaraderie and company of a third place by sitting in a dark room staring at a computer is ludicrous. Uh, be very careful when they try to sell you the idea that you can have a, a sense of community and get together with your friends via electronic devices. Doesn't work, never will. Let's look then at the functions of third places. What do they actual, actually do for us? Number one, they unify the neighborhood if you have them. They unify the neighborhood. Uh, in the heyday of the uh, saloon or the, uh, the uh, <laughs> saloon or what, uh, not liquor store, but the, uh, well, we'll call them saloons, wh where you could buy beer. In the heyday of those things, 80% of the people came from within a two-block radius. They walked to them. You can't walk to a saloon nowadays, and one of the reasons that we, that our consumption of alcohol has shifted from the public domain from the private is because of the, the fear of driving, uh, getting a DUI, driving under the influence. And <coughs> so, they unify the neighborhood. They're, they're, they're a place where everybody meets everybody, and uh, they all get to know their neighbors. Secondly, you get friends by the set. The average person, we're told in the literature, has between three and five friends. Now, if you have a third place, you probably will acquire a, a, approximately eight to ten more. Friends are important. The research has shown this over and over again. The more friends you have, the more successful you are in business. The more friends you have, the longer you live. Very strong data supporting those ideas. <clears throat> then you have, let's put it this way, in both the work situation and in the family, you are playing fairly constrained roles. You have to be pretty much the same person, act the same way, do the same things day in and day out. So the third place gives you a release gets you away from all of this, and, and you can uh, behave in a totally different manner. One of, the, one of the reasons that we know, that I know, that uh, the, the third place is, is a, a jovial place, and we, we, we studied 33 groups, if I remember correctly, and we simply had our field people count the number of times people would laugh. Now, in the United States, we're told that the average American laughs 17 times a day. Sometimes it's bumped up to 20, 17 to 20 times a day. We found that in third places, people laugh in groups of three to eight, we looked at. People laugh an average of 107 times per hour. Uh, the third place is an intellectual forum, and uh, I, I want to make two points about that. First of all, uh, the term intellectual refers to learning things and understanding things. And much of what you learn in face-to-face -face conversation is not spoken. You pick up all sorts of cues, and, and you get to know people uh, much, much more deeply in, when you're in face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. Now, more recently, knowledge workers, 
thanks to some developments uh, in some of the companies. We used to think that the productivity increased as a function of the amount of time a worker would spend at his desk. Uh, more, more recently, however, now we know that if people are left to work not only where they want to and when they want to, productivity a actually increases. Best Buy uh, company, if you're familiar with it, is, is a good example of that. Um, so um, the, the mantra, if you will, the new mantra in, in, uh, in uh, the world of business these days is collaboration. So instead of you, the, the typical worker being envisioned sitting alone in his office, he's out talking with colleagues and other people, and it works. The third place also is a port of entry, if you have them. When you enter a new neighborhood, how do you get acquainted? Well, in the United States today, in the typical subdivision, you can't. There's no way to get acquainted with your neighbors because privacy is of the essence. But in neighborhoods where, they, where, where the place on the corner is not just another private house or home, uh, you, you meet with people there, and very quickly you learn all you need to know about the neighborhood, who can do what, who's useful, who to avoid, blah, blah, blah. And you make a few friends in the context. Also, the third place is a staging area. We had a uh, hurricane in Florida not too long ago, Hur Hur Hurricane Andrew. And a lot of able-bodied people got up early to uh, help, but they didn't know where to go. There were no gathering places. And this is important because, as you probably well know, it, it, for officials, for, for the established institutions to, to, to uh, render the help that people need takes too long. And, and so that's an important one. Um, third place is generate social capital. Social capital is, um, well, uh, it, it's <laughs> if people no, get to know and trust one another, the more broadly the, the knowledge and trust of others obtains, the more social capital, the better the area will do economically. Now, in the southeastern part of the United States, there are so-called wet counties and dry counties. Uh, more dry counties in this region of the world than uh, anywhere else I know of. Uh, the dry counties don't generate as much capital as the wet counties. Why? Well, because they have these places where you can go drink beer or whatever and people get to know one another and build more social capital. Third places are also mutual aid societies. You get to know these these people, and again, you have quite a mix, a mix of occupations, a mix of uh, educational levels, uh, and, and in that mix, you accumulate a lot of knowledge, uh, a lot of ability. For example, one time I was driving a car that needed a new generator, and so I drove it up one day, and a friend of mine had secured a rebuilt one, went out within 15 minutes. He had installed it and put it back. A friend of mine was having trouble with a big tree in his backyard, and so I went over with my chainsaw and took care of that tree. And that kind of thing happens all the time. And people don't keep score. That, that's the wonderful thing about this, this camaraderie that you get among third-place regulars. They're glad to do for one another. And they're not a closed circle, by the way. Just as you um, enjoy the diversity there, so also you, uh, you are prone to welcome another figure from another place with another occupation, and you learn, and you learn, and you learn. <clears throat> um, third place is add life to the public domain. The best example and the most obvious example of this is the, is the uh, sidewalk cafe, the, the cafe with outdoor seating, the terrace seating, as they call it. The, these, these are wonderful institutions. Now, in the United States, they're beginning to catch on. In fact, they're, 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 they're multiplying at a, a significant rate. They, didn't, we, they used to be disallowed uh, even before the 1926 ruling, the, 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 you could always have cafes downtown. But 
this harkens back to the horse and buggy days because the livery stables had enormous piles of manure, which begat flea, flies, which begat disease, so you couldn't serve food outdoors. Well, those days are gone, and finally we're realizing, gee, we can really vitalize. And by the way, one of the problems of cities around the world these days, how do we get more vitality in our cities? How do we get more people on the streets? And um, the answer to that is fairly obvious. You do it with the cafe or similar places. Um, <clears throat> now, the cafe, uh, I mentioned, I think, that uh, Italy and France are good examples of uh, cultures that have always favored the cafe, that have always favored the third place, whatever it is. In most parts of the world, for a variety of reasons, they have been looked down on. So what my book mainly attempted to do was, was to extol the virtues of third places, why we should have them, what they're good for. Uh, in the United States, although the law, the government, is, does not object to people getting together, uh, Puritans do. That We have a sort of a puritanical bent that exists today. And a lot of people, um, of course, when you, when, when you go to hang out in a third place, you are hanging out. And for a lot of people, that's just one step above loitering, and that's bad. Um, we are finally, be, because it is increasingly difficult in, in this country for people to get together easily and often, uh, we are finally, finally seeing, I think, the value of it. At any rate... Um, <clears throat> In some cult uh, cultures, as you well know, uh, the government has frowned upon. Uh, I, I remember under, in, in, back in World War II, under Hitler, it, it was against the law for more than three people to, to, to get together on a street corner and talk. Uh, and, and, when, and when he took over uh, various European countries, uh, the, the uh, habitués of the coffee places found themselves under arrest quite frequently. Well, um, I have given you, I think, the basics of the third place. It's, uh, it, it, it's increasingly hard to, to, to manage these things. I, I think one of the reasons is because of all the focus on electronic communication these days. But I, uh, I want to impress upon you that there's nothing like getting together face-to-face. -to -face. Thank you.